Welcome to the suburbs with Andy and Greg. So good morning. How are you? Great. Rolling down the river. What river? Columbia River. Now, isn't the Columbia River to run through Boardman, Oregon? That's a shout out to the 541. Yo, what's up, my brothers? So what's going on? There's this weird thing going on in my neighborhood right now. And I'm, I think I'm watching evolution in play as I walk Jeffrey every morning. In real time. Real time evolution. There is a red-tailed hawk that has decided that circling and hunting squirrels and chipmunks is really for the birds, pun intended. <laughs> and it ground hunts. Be very, very quiet. <laughs> so every morning... All week long, since I've been back from mom duty, we're walking at like 6.15 in the morning, mm -hmm. and this hawk is on the ground listening for worms. I've watched it catch worms. It's killed all the squirrels and <laughs> no, chipmunks. It is, no, it is. They're, they're plentiful. There are, there are so many rabbits and squirrels in our neighborhood. We need some more red fox to kind of balance the power. There are two yards that are its favorite yards. They're across the street from each other. Uh, it's bigger than a cat. And it's always kind of in the same areas. And Jeffrey clicks into his natural instincts of being a hunting dog and will stop and point. Oh, really? Literally, literally say, there it is. And freezes. And I can't get him to move. And so we sit there and watch the hawk hunt for worms. Seriously, like it was raised by robins. And does he then go to the river and uh, try to catch fish? I think he lives on a flat in the river. <laughs> <laughs> in an artist community. <laughs> Prefers tea over water. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That type. That type. <laughs> Has a beret. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> and I thought, okay, is it injured? No, because he had enough of Jeffrey stalking it. It flew. Fine. Didn't limp. Didn't kind of hobble flew up and landed on a wire like the uh, with the other birds. They're not afraid of them. Like normally they are chasing them. Have you ever seen, you know, there you see a hawk a lot of times and there's some little bird just fit to be tied and chasing it and dive bombing it. Chasing the hawk. Yeah. Oh, I've never seen that. What? No, really? No. Oh man, yeah, they'll like they'll raid the nest or pick on somebody and the the other birds just want none of that and so they chase it and they dive bomb it until it's out of their territory. So how's the jackal population in your neighborhood? <laughs> I go back to mom duty on uh Monday evening. She's got this weird thing going on where she thinks that there's a secret passage in her house and a secret closet. And so she said, uh, and I'm like, really, a secret closet? Uh, yes, do you want me to show it to you? I said, yeah, I do wanna see that. <laughs> this so I gotta see. She leads me upstairs and she, she just like, all of a sudden she says, I can't find it. <laughs> Extremely secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's that much of a secret. But she thinks- And invisible. <laughs> probably, o only to the unknowing. Like the people that know, they can see it. Kind of like the emperor's new clothes. <laughs> right. She thinks that the cats and dogs can go through the secret passage and Jeffrey can wreak havoc with the cats. So she's always locking the cats in a room and I won't know it. And so I'll say, hey, it's, it's about lunchtime. Do you want to go to the gym? And she'll say, yeah. And I'll go upstairs because she gets, for she forgets that we're going to the gym. And so I have to go retrieve her. And then all of a sudden there's there's a door shut. Mm -hmm. And I'll open the door and the, one of the cats will just like come bursting. <laughs> Thank God you came. It's been holding its breath the entire time. <laughs> Glad that's over. <laughs> right. Till the next time. <laughs> Till the, yeah. Later that day, it's just been a, it's been a hard day with a lot of memory issues. So... I come in and I hear, Rain! 
Egg. Now, as, as the cat locked her in the. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is where we're going. Glad that's over. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be perfect? Just <laughs> perfect. <laughs> And so I just think, oh, man, you know, I don't know. She she doesn't have anything sharp. She can't. Is she hurt? Isn't she hurt? I don't, <laughs> I don't want to go up there right now. Greg. Okay. All right. So I go up the stairs and she's laying on the floor with an empty bowl in her hand. And I go, what's up, Julie? <laughs> because obviously she's not hurt. Oh, it's horrible. The cats, someone locked them in my room. And I need to feed them. And I can't get, I don't know where the food is. And I go, what, what are you going to crawl like a caterpillar to the food? You're laying on the floor. <laughs> and uh, look, man. We, we laying are, low. <laughs> she's laying, she is laying low. Extremely low. <laughs> And I said, we have talked about this, Julie. You can't feed the cats in your room. No litter box in your room. No feeding the cats in your room. They're, they're, I'm afraid that they're starving. And and at right like on cue, she's got this Himalayan that that has enough fat for two cats in it. And it just goes walking by like Garfield. Sup? <laughs> <laughs> Peace hey. out. Peace out, brother, and just goes strolling by. The other one is asleep on the back of the couch. Not starving. Not starving. Not usually. That's not the behavior of a starving cat. You know, maybe they'd be in the yard with the hawk, like leaning its ear, yeah. waiting for worms to move. And it's kind of like that every day. So she has this hallucination that she's dying and believes it. So she says, call Greg and tell him I'm dying. Which is almost like a psychic. <laughs> like no. if you're, I don't know how many people go. Hey, would you call such? <laughs> could you order pizza and, and yeah. tell Greg I'm dying? I've got a, a list. <laughs> Get milk, right? <laughs> feed, feed the cat. I'm dying. Not in that order. So we had an appointment with the neurologist scheduled for like a week and a half after that. So there was no real need to jump into emergency mode and call people because they're not gonna i mean the man those people are booked out a year in advance you know what i mean sure uh, kind of like the mole patrol <laughs> exactly they're booked out very busy there are a lot of moles out there you know what i, I don't think the hawk is hunting any of them <laughs> i get up there and my sister has bought this baby monitor with a black and white screen so it's almost like if it's dark enough it's like ghost like night vision yeah, it's 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 creepy. Like those paranormal shows. Yes, it's exactly like that. Yes. So I'm waiting for that. Well, I'm the, waiting for hmm, there's an entity. Yeah, something to kind of kind of like Ooh. come out rise from her body at night. Where are the Fritos? <laughs> I got to feed the cat. <laughs> yeah. And so I uh so she rallies and decides that she's not dying the day I get there. Good. Can't take credit for it. But, but it happened. Good. And so I said, do you want to come down for lunch? And she said, I believe, yes. I, I believe I want to come down for lunch. So she comes down for lunch and then goes back. Do you want to come down for dinner? Yeah, I do want to come down for dinner. And she can't, she can't get dressed anymore. She, she tries. And so she'll put her arm through the neck hole of the <laughs> shirt. <laughs> and then she'll just, like, if we were sitting out This porch, is good enough. <laughs> this will do. <laughs> She she goes, I believe I'm chilly. We're out on the porch. It's screening porch. You know, it's nice out. I said, okay, I'm going to go get a sweatshirt. I go, okay. So she comes back. She's got the arm through the neck hole into the sleeve, <laughs> and she just sits down. And so I thought, I, I don't want to act like I need to help her, but when she asks for help, I'll help her. Right. And so she's sitting there, and, and it's like a pitcher in, in the next, in between innings. Mm -hmm. You know, have you ever seen them yeah, where right. they're just wearing the jacket? Keeping their arm warm. <laughs> yeah, that's what she, so she was. Hey, uh, Julie, you comfortable? <laughs> I believe I am. <laughs> yeah, you want some sunflower seeds? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big league chew. Chaw. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so uh, at one point I'm looking at her and she's looking at me and she goes, I, I can't get the rest of this on. 
And I said, do you want some help? Yes, I want some help. Okay. So I help her with it on. I'm going to relax until about 6 p.m. and then make dinner. She said, okay, that sounds like a good idea. So she has dinner. And then I said, okay, I'm going to give you your medicine at 730. So before we do that, um, we need to put your briefs on and uh, get you ready for bed. And she goes, oh, um, well, you know, I want you to know that I had a very nice time at dinner and I enjoyed our conversation, but I'm not having sex with you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you don't know how true that is. You're my mom. We aren't going to have sex. Trust me. <laughs> that was never a part of the plan. <laughs> that was not on that list. <laughs> no. No. The milk and eggs, maybe, yeah. I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, no. Sex with mom, no bueno. And so that's become a nightly thing. Like, uh, I mean, I have the nightly thing that, that for me is I got to get her dressed. And there was one time where I didn't do that. This friend that I ski with, Stephen A. and his girlfriend Vicky invited me over for dinner. I said, I can come over for dinner, but it's going to have to be later because she takes her meds at 7.30 and I, I need to be there to mm -hmm. give her her meds. I give her her meds and then I go over. Jeffrey goes with me because they've got a little dog, Blue, and they, they love to play. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I'm there for like two hours and I start to feel I need to go back because I can't stay in the cottage anymore. I have to stay at mom's now. She's 24 seven care. I feel like I need to be there. You've been gone long enough. Too long. And she's at the base of this hill. And as I'm winding down the hill, I have a shot straight into the windows of her bedroom and I see her up and it's like 1030 going on 11. I thought, man, that's weird. I wonder what she's doing. And so. <laughs> could be anything. <laughs> yeah, well, it sure could. So <laughs> I come in the house and I, there's a baby gate that I put in the doorway between the family room and the rest of the house. And Jeffrey stays in the family mm -hmm. room kitchen. And so I put the gate up again. And um, as I'm going up the stairs, I hear hot blooded, like 70s rock awesome coming from my mom's bedroom she's just not a more a music pride we've covered that sure. already when we were talking about marie deep as snow yeah <laughs> dvds she, yes she, she's a spoken word person doesn't listen to music so was it joel olstein singing 70s no it's foreigner <laughs> oh okay <laughs> maybe joel olstein's classic rock album it wasn't awkward like that it was it was really foreigner there's an am radio station wlki spinning the hits and she'll listen to it for weather and traffic on the nines or whatever and <laughs> and so that's on on her clock radio she's got her sunglasses on a hat her clothes are on still and she's walking laps around the part of her bedroom like at the foot of her bed that before you get to the bathroom and the walk-in closet there's this space of room right she's doing laps <laughs> with foreigner playing and I said, what's up, Julie? And she goes, I'm exercising. <laughs> and and uh, like pushes me off like a running back. Like I get the stiff arm. And I said, I think it's time for bed. And, and she's like, what? I said, yeah, it's going on 11. Oh, what's with the sunglasses? <laughs> <laughs> she's like Ray Charles impression all this time. Powered down a big blunt. <laughs> Got the classic rock on the glasses. Is oh. she had a bag of chips? Or <laughs> oh, she is a chip person. She is. I got her all settled down, but man, that was it. Was just she's got the crazy lady hair going with the hat and the sunglasses, and and at that point, I knew okay, I can't leave until she's in bed. So fast forward to to she thinks she's dying again and we go to the neurology visit and my sister is hoping that the neurologist is going to say oh she's going to be in bed within four months and i'm going to write an order for palliative care mm -hmm. and we go into this visit and he's got these diagnostic tests or benchmark tests 
And so he'll say, I'm going to say three words. I want you to remember them and repeat them. And then throughout the course of the, of the appointment, he'll call those words. Okay. Tell me those words. Mm -hmm. And then he'll ask, you know, what's your birthday? What County are you in? What city are you in? Do you like foreigner? Do you like (laughs) foreigner? So at the neurology appointment, she rallies and answers every question, right? Every question, except when it came to draw the clock face. Versus drawing a pistol? Yeah. Right. And so he draws the circle, and then he says, I want you to fill in the numbers, and then he'll say, I want you to make it 10 after 2. You know, he should have asked her to draw 25 or 6 to (laughs) 4. But that's in steps. So step one is put the numbers on there. Right. She drew, I mean, tiny. It was like... She had a magnifying glass to draw the number two, and the number two was like down in the four area, and that was she got nothing after that. She's like, I got nothing. Okay, can you show me with drawing hands what 10 minutes after two is? No, she can't. So he's like, okay. And so then my sister's like at, waiting to ask the golden question. Do you think it's time for palliative care? He's like, no, no, I don't. But I can send an email to her family practice doc saying, Can you get her a copy of Foreigner's Greatest Hits? (laughs) They need to reevaluate her because apparently some people recover from dementia. That's not true. Yeah, like it's the flu. Oh, I thought I had dementia. (laughs) But it turned out to be a cold. You know, we've got uh, trying to keep track of all the spinning plates in this busy retired lives. We have relegated ourselves to, uh, we have these permanent notes that we have that uh, one says pull water on one that says back gate open one that says soldering iron on soldering iron and uh there may be a couple more i call it my alzheimer's starters kit (laughs) (laughs) but okay so let me ask you something about that my mom has one on her mirror that's that's something like Peace of love, and I, I can't remember. Make every day the best day. Something like that, yeah. Let's just say the soldering iron on one. Right. Okay, so uh, always an important one. Could cause a fire. I'm guessing could cause a fire. Is that why you've got it on there? People think it could. People think it could. Okay. So <laughs> We won't go any further. So we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll be respectful and just know that it's on and know that it needs to be turned off when I'm done with it. Sure. But here's my question. With those notes, does that become like background noise after a while? No. And you don't see them? No, no. No, we, they definitely help me remember that the pool water is on oh, or okay. fill in the pool. Okay. Or the back gates are unlocked because we want to make sure they they are always locked. Right. Yeah, I remember. But, okay, but so they're but they're always posted no, there? No, no, only when they're in use. Oh. So I'll pull I... them out of the drawer, soldering <laughs> iron on. <laughs> So is this is this like a professionally produced note? Is it like from the label gun? It could be, but it's not. It's just <laughs> Sharpie on a piece of white paper. Oh, okay. I could have gone and typed up fancy little... I, I want to see it on a magnet. Like, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> put it someplace. <laughs> and they're huge. <laughs> Are they? Oh, yeah. Framed? It could be, yeah, right. <laughs> you sort through, you got all these little framed ones, and then you put that on the so nail. What's going on right now? Well, oh. <laughs> Pull water on. <laughs> Back in the 80s, in the, the heyday of my studio days, there was a, one of our jingle customers who was also a very good friend of mine would like to get his clients involved in the session sometimes just for them to participate and feel like that they're part of it. So they sent them out into the studio during a jingle session and when they would put hand claps on the song. And as we all know, you know, clapping on the offbeat two and four is normal you know just when you're clapping to music when you clap on one and three we call that white man's disease <laughs> do you <laughs> two and four is your typical offbeat so the send the client going oh, out with the singers and put headphones on when you do the hand claps the singers were singing something along the lines are we're going to be your choice for all your needs so the customers out there are singing we're going to be your choice for all your needs and they're like stop 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 the tape what's going on it's not two and four. Well, yeah, I said on the word two and on the word four, I was clapping <laughs> instead of to the beat of the music. I said, no, was no, that no. the accountant? Who knows? <laughs> the agency guy or something or the guy from the grocery store was out there. The gr- yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, so he's yeah. out there just, you know, looking at the music and he's whenever the word two or four would appear on the oh music, he would gosh. clap and had to explain to him we're doing this rhythmically. 
not on word cues. And the other one I remember fondly was the my friend Doug called me up and to warn me. He says, just letting you know, the client's coming and he's bringing his sacks. Oh, no. Oh, no. And you said sacks of what? Yeah, right. <laughs> Hi, this is Andy. If you enjoyed listening to our podcast, please be sure to subscribe and share. Remember, laughter is contagious. Help us spread it by telling a friend.